Okay, good afternoon everybody. Uh, I'm here representing Nanofaber. I'm one of the founders. Uh, this is a spin-off uh, company uh, focusing on uh, innovative materials, nanomaterials, uh, in two main areas. Uh, smart polymers uh, fabricated by electrospinning and another uh, part of, uh, of the company dedicated to uh, nanoparticles, smart nanoparticles, reactive nanoparticles, essentially based on magnetic and uh, plasmonic uh, principia. Uh, this company is a young startup uh, that was born between um, uh, the University of L'Aquila and the University of Vigo in Spain, so it's born international. Part of the owners are from Italy, part of the owners are from Vigo. Uh, three out of four are uh, essentially coming from academia. Uh, presently, I'm also a staff researcher at ENEA, our national uh, uh, innovation uh, uh, it, it's a long name, by the way. It's, it's the National Institution, Research Institution, second largest in Italy, devoted to uh, um, innovation and, eco uh, and economical sustainable development. Uh, anyways, why NA is important? Because this spin-off is now also an NA spin-off. So it's, uh, it's been endorsed by NA, and it's actually as the main operation site in the NA Casaccia Research Center, which is uh, nearby Rome. Um, and this is nice for a company like this. Uh, okay, so far, so we have Spain and Italy. We are looking to becoming even more international. Uh, what we do is uh, rather diverse right now. Um, today I'm here to talk about uh, nanoparticles specifically. But we also do nanomaterials, nanobiomaterials fabricated by electrospinning. And we also have a line of research and products uh, for uh, microscopy and spectroscopy. Uh, for atomic force uh, microscopy, special tips and stuff, microfabricated, nice stuff. Uh, and then also we provide services, uh, um, non-conventional services, characterization mainly. Uh, however, really our focus in, is in area one and two. Um, this is uh, the main reason of my uh, being here today, because we have developed this uh, hyaluronic acid. We are uh, filing for a patent. It's under evaluation. We are waiting for a report right now. And this is a special uh, biomaterial that we believe can be a breakthrough in the market, because uh, it has special uh, properties. Uh, and if we compare um, the, uh, the common performance of a high uh, molecular weight hyaluronic acid used for osteoarthrosis or reum, um, arthritis, rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis, um, these type of materials outperforms that type of material. Usually, uh, and we also have a number of nanoparticles that I put there just for show, and they will be on sale next week. But this is what I want you to focus on. This is why the picture is larger. So. Usually, hyaluronic acid is nowadays used uh, for viscoinduction treatment. So, periodically, <clears throat> people and patients receive uh, receive uh, uh, injection, uh, essentially made of hyaluronic acid, uh, that is supposed to uh, establish uh, some physiological parameter in the cartilage and um, in, the, in the intraarticular meniscus. However, these are not uh, always easy. Sometimes you have to use an eco-guided technique. And, uh, and in, in, in both cases, what is the problem? That the hyaluronic acid comes in and then goes systemic. So you lose it. And it doesn't stay. So every once in a while, rather frequently, you have to go back for treatment. Besides, if you use a different molecular weight hyaluronic acid, the results are different. In our case, we have manufactured um, these, nano, these micro uh, sponges. That's the name we gave them. Uh, out of the, one of the highest molecular weight uh, hyaluronic acid on the market. And we have benchmarked it in, uh, on animal model. I have, uh, there is a little bit of camouflage because this is coming out in the paper very soon. Um, but this shows essentially that in this uh, red, in the left hand side you have the treated with our nanoparticles and the right hand side you have the one with standard. Medi uh, medical device product, because these are medical devices. They are not really pharmaceutical. Uh, they are not, these are not drugs. These are medical devices. And as you can see, after two months, you still have signal from our fluorinated, you know, uh, we have colored this hyaluronic acid. We, this means that you essentially have the potential of retaining hyaluronic acid for 30 times more uh, longer, 30 times longer than the benchmark in the market. 
So this can be a huge advantage, considering that we are living in an aging society, that, is, uh, that this type of uh, pathologies are targeted also in Horizon, in all communitarian programs, and uh, there is a huge business. This is uh, also arthritis accounts, if I remember correctly, uh, as a second um, most impacting disease in our society. Um, so these are essentially time zero, 15, 20 days, one month, two months. Uh, and then let's go real brief also to talk about these other products, which is uh, products made by Electrospini. We have an industrial uh, machine, an industrial setup. This facility is being set up in an air because we have all the facility, all the surrounding for the waste management, for the uh, uh, TM, SCM microscopy, AFM microscopy to characterize and qualify these materials. Besides, in an air right now, we have as much, as much space as we want if we can uh, build a very nice uh, business around this. And, um, and we're going in production. So uh, around the mid of, uh, of November, there will be our first catalog out. Uh, for sale. Some products will be manufactured and shipped from Rome, some other products will be manufactured and shipped from Spain. And these are products that right now are targeted for the research uh, market. They can be further developed by researchers worldwide, uh, functionalized or changed as the, as the researcher wants. And they are used uh, mostly for tissue engineering right now, and also, however, for filtration, ultra-filtration stadium for and, uh, water and air treatment, so other giant area of expansion. Um, so going back to our uh, vision of the market, what we are looking at is the pharmaceutical drug delivery, which we, are, um, which we associate to the microsponges. What is the problem with, with the microsponges? That we cannot produce and sell these materials for human uh, research, for human application, of course, until we don't run a clinical trial, until we, don't have, we, don't, we are not GMP certified, until we don't have a number of things in place, until we don't walk a roadmap of development. So uh, this is why, uh, even if we have this nice invention, we are looking for ways of uh, deploying this technology, the microsponges, uh, with the help of qualified partners that can uh, help us overcome the gaps. Uh, of course, uh, so these nanoparticles are interesting because uh, you can use them as a carriers and you can use them for drug delivery. You can load them with other mediums and they are nice because they stay where you put them. So they don't go systemic. So besides the viscoinduction application, they also work as a carrier of other uh, drugs, which is probably even more interesting and appealing to many of you. So I don't know how many rings are bell, I mean, how many <laughs> rings bell right now, but everyone has uh, its own vision of this type of thing. But then we're developing the medical devices, so we will combine these micro sponges and any other particles that are unique, because only we can provide those, because those are patented between Rome and, and University of Vigo, and we are producing just to provide them to the, to the research world. And uh, we are going to uh, be offering medical device and com uh, incorporating these nanoparticles. And so we have electrospan fibers that are biocompatible, bioerodable, up, ready, and FDA approved, made of PCL or PLLA, so polymers that are approved already for uh, human use. And we will uh, further qualify and, uh, and upgrade them in-house. But however, we also have uh, application for cosmetics because this type of uh, material, talking about the electrospinning material, which has nanofibrous nano mats, they can be also water soluble. So you can put them on the skin and then with some water, just remove it. And whatever was to be delivered should stay there somehow. Of course, uh, this is not as simple as, uh, you know, as, as it seems. However, there are uh, cosmetics uh, uh, firms that are actually working on this right now. And of course, research supply is present. It's what we can uh, probably supply with the least uh, uh, normative burden. So there is not too much regulation that has to go into it. So we are looking at licensing microsponges to suitable partners. Our goal is to go from TRL5, because we proved in animal model that it works. We have to go now up to TRL9. I'm using the, the jargon of technical jargon of the European community, which is becoming uh, widespread right now. So TRL9 mean, meaning commercial uh, stadium. Uh, with a time to market of two years, by roadmap that includes clinical trials, scale up, mass production, and compliance. And these are some of the references that we are looking for. And then we are looking for private funding 
the first round, we already actually launched our first round of uh, private investing uh, uh, partners to be taken on board uh, to develop our GMP in an air. So we like to develop our own facility, not for all products, not for the micro sponges, but for the, for the electro span material. This is why I decided to mention them today to you guys. So uh, reaching GMP standards can be done in one, two years for uh, what we have in mind for our scaffold line. And pursuing an ISO 13485 ATMP strategy, uh, again, can take a little longer, but uh, uh, you know, it is necessary if we want to go in the biomedical research and in regenerative medicine field. And then we have to develop later on other, uh, an international distribution. So we are ready later on to open up, um, and to uh, negotiate agreements worldwide because the market for these things is worldwide. I think with this, um, over. You know, I don't have an answer for that. I don't think I have enough insight to answer that. Besides, uh, my partner in crime for the biological validation would be the perfect person to ask. But I would be more than happy to actually to, uh, to bounce your question to her. She's in Australia right now, but we, we work on a daily basis. And uh, personally, I believe there should be no issue. I think it should be to different degrees of effectivity, effective at, in any age, by the way. It depends, of course. We're also working with the uh, St. Peter Hospital in Rome, uh, where there is a beautiful uh, rheumatology department and very nice specialist that you may know. And we are trying to see, to, to, to understand a little bit more about the real potential uh, in, on patients. And we really don't have data. For the GMP standard, you said you will take one, two, three years. So are you, do you have any industrial partners for that? Are you no. developing something totally new for this type of product? No, I think th these things are around. So there is knowledge and people know how to do it. Uh, we're looking for partners who can do it. Uh, of course, uh, it would be to open up. The, the reason is to open up and to enlarge the market. What we have right now is all the infrastructure and all the space to do it which I managed to secure during the summer, so I'm very happy. Now I have to find the, the partner actually to, because that entails, of course, capitals, and you have to invest. You need knowledge, specialized people, and you need money to do that. But you said you have the facility to do it? Yeah. No, I have space. In an area, okay. I have a lot of space. I, if I need to have 10,000 square meters floor, I can have it. For so, like a pilot line? For any. Yeah, right now I have a lab, but I can, I can scale up as needed. Thank you. Thank you.